Hey, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to do kind of like an unstructured video. Um, it's actually uh, part of a job interview, so I'll probably remove it from my channel um, on down the line. But what I'm going to be looking at today is what I've been able to do over the weekend with uh, NVIDIA's Isaac Simulator and um, simulating uh, drone strikes that occurred in Russia. Uh, this is the famous uh, Operation Spiderweb. It happened about a month ago, a little over a month ago. Um, and, yep, they sent in about 117 drones and wreaked havoc. Um, I think most of the destruction happened up here. I'm not sure. I've been focused on the Balaya Air Base um, just because it's, it's the one that's, you know, the furthest uh, into Russia. So it was kind of like the most interesting one to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it was it was a devastating attack. And, you know, I'm not sure if a half unit shipping container was sent to, you know, a few clicks outside one of our bases here in the U.S. Uh, I'm not so sure there's a whole, whole lot we could do or would be prepared to do at this point in time. Um, it's, you know, it's a new threat, you know. Um, but yeah, the most interesting thing, and in just in researching this, um, was that uh, allegedly, uh, reportedly, uh, they had used uh, decommissioned Soviet aircraft to train uh, AI image classifiers, and had a backup system that would, um, you know, essentially locate uh, certain profiles and shapes, and then uh, land in targeted land on certain targeted areas of it. So, that's kind of a rundown of uh, what I was, what I've been looking into. And I had done this with Gazebo Simulator, which is, uh, that's the default simulator that, um, that comes with the, uh, this flight controller. Uh, it's kind of like the, the gold standard, or has been for many years, but Gazebo's got too many problems these days. It's, it's a broken piece of software. Um, yeah, yeah. So like they specify here that the Gazebo is the standard um, simulation package, and Nvidia Isaac's much much more powerful. Um, it is a uh, it's designed for uh, robotics, uh, machine learning in particular, um, and it's also capable of scaling to large terrains. Like with Gazebo, it has a problem where you cannot s its physics just will not scale to a, a large terrain environment, whereas Isaac Sim has uh, been designed from the ground up to be uh, ultra scalable and, um, you know, is advertised as, you know, can be used for autonomous vehicles and self-driving cars. So, you know, having uh, this is the ability to support larger environments is uh, key. I, I actually got the gazebo version to work. I had to slice it up into, into tiles. So let's look at some data that we got. So what I uh, sourced my information from, uh, I was using this as uh, uh, Sentinel-2 satellite data. That's a weather satellite. It goes, uh, it takes 10 meter resolution photos. So you know, one pixel is uh, 10 meters. So you zoom in, it's not all that great. Um, the benefit of the weather satellites though is the frequency at which they sweep over. So if we go to the day of the attack, you can see how, how often, I mean literally it's every other day you're getting shots of pretty much wherever you need. So that's the benefit of using weather data. But on the day of the attack, unfortunately, they had cloud cover. Likewise, on the third, they had some pretty heavy cloud cover. And this is the first one after the attack to where you can really see a few blocks of pixels. It's not much, but um, they've actually got AI upscaling technology. That's uh, it's a model that's it's not released to the public. It's available as a as a binary wheel Python wheel that's only on a Google Colab notebook. So, uh, nevertheless, I was able to use it use this notebook to 
or write my own little script here that would actually s segment out all the sections that I needed. Um, this one will do four kilometers by four kilometers. So I don't know, I needed however many I needed, maybe 12. Um, and I just stitched them together in my GIS software. So you can see the outline that yeah, I had to have six of them, six different patches. But you can see the AI enhancement is pretty incredible. I mean, compared to, you know, where it was. Pretty impressive. But that's just a neat trick. Um, uh, unfortunately, I haven't got the the terrain to be textured in the NVIDIA Isaac Sim like I had it in the Gazebo Sim. It's just, um, I haven't made it that far yet. And then I, I ran into some computer problems. Uh, my computer started randomly crashing on me, or not crashing, like cutting off on me today. It did it once before, um, yesterday, but it, it's been doing it to me all day today. It'll be a miracle if I can get this video recorded. Um, so, you can kind of see the outline of the planes here. It did a pretty good job. Um, yeah, it looks like somebody was out investigating it, and yeah, it's clearly some kind of vehicle. But the AI is kind of crazy. Like, sometimes it'll get it wrong. Like, I know this was a destroyed aircraft because um, there were there was satellite images released from higher resolution sources that, that confirmed it. Um, but you can, this is just kind of like a, a caveat when you're using the AI upscaler. It upscales it by a factor of 10. And uh, it just hallucinated and it thought it was an oil slick. You know, it got these kind of correct, but it... And this might actually be, this could totally be a destroyed plane, now that I think about it. And it literally just hallucinated this, you know, open door. That's just kind of something that was interesting. But uh, that was my source for the data. Um, the elevation map is at 30 meters. Though I've uh, upscaled it and smoothed it to 10 meters. We can go ahead and launch the simulation. And this is a 12 by 12 kilometer uh, patch. My voice might be going crazy right now because the launching Isaac Sim does take everything your computer has. Like you actually need a 4090 and you need a, the, the minimum is like 32 gigabytes of RAM. But uh, nevertheless, you need a strong um, strong system to be able to run it. And that is different from Gazebo. But um, it's totally worth it for sure. All right, so now we got that there. Got our drone spawned in. I got our terrain. You can kind of look out across there. And this is an absolutely massive chunk. Let's see here. I got to speed up a little bit. Not that fast. Like that fast. Yeah, so this is an absolutely enormous chunk. And this is the the same chunk as by the um oh you can see it actually right here on Q ground control. So where's my drone at? No, that's the ground. Yeah. So you know we can take off But yeah, it's, so this is an entire, and I've tested the collision, the collision is stable across this entire region. So that's another thing with Gazebo. Like I could, I could render it visually, but I could not enable the collision because it's broken. Gazebo in 2025 is so bad that um, clicking pause on the simulator, on the Gazebo simulator will crash the simulator. So I don't know what the open, uh, Open Robotics Foundation is doing uh, OSRF. I have no idea what they're doing with that, or Ross for that matter. But um, you know, Nvidia's got the uh, has got some actual big money backing behind it, and uh, their CEO seems to think that uh, 
RL machine learning, ro robotics, and things like that's the future. So uh, I, I expect a lot more development and um, a lot more stuff to be happening over here with Isaac. And this is so new, in fact, that um, uh, and I don't take credit for it, although I kind of am. But I um, I was working on getting this running on Isaac Sim 4.5 because the release of Pegasus, which is that's what this is right here, this um, plugin, um, it was only compatible with up to 4.2. And then I noticed they had a release branch for 4.5, and I ran that, and uh, I I ran into issues right away. But uh, it was a system level issue, and I. I figured out that um, it was the Vulkan API was consuming uh, too many file descriptors. I think the default limit for Ubuntu is like 1,024, and it would sit at like 1,388. Um, probably because I've got integrated graphics in addition to my graphics card. So having you know the the system sees two GPUs, so it doubles the number of fire file descriptors that it uses. Whereas the developer, I don't think that he was. Um, I think he just had a single discrete GPU, so that was a that allowed it to work um, for his. But uh, I posted on GitHub uh, the issue, and then he posted some information about that, and then uh, actually went ahead and released 4.5. So 4.5 was just released yesterday, and like I said, I don't take credit for it. I mean, you know, maybe. Maybe I just poked the guy and he did it, but um, but no. After that, I, I got it working uh, with the development branch even, and then um, just uh, yeah, I started with Isaac uh, Friday, so this is about after three days of toying around with it, seeing how far I could push it. Um, I'm definitely using Isaac from now on for all my PX4 drone stuff. Um, there's absolutely no comparison. It's it, it gazebo is a joke compared to this bad boy, uh, though it does it does require a a lot of computer. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna wrap this video up before my computer crashes and I lose everything. Uh, appreciate y'all watching, and um, yeah. That's about all I have to say about that.